Uh, again, my name is Rafi. I'm Chief Operating Officer of Grayson Investment Group. My name is Jorge Vasquez, CEO of Grayson Investment Group. And where can they find us? They can always find us, Rafi, at homesforincome.com. That is homes, the number four, income.com. Excellent, excellent. So, again, like I was saying, the, the topic today is it's one that is it's very relevant. There was actually an article in the Tampa Bay Times recently about it. Tampa Bay rents are soaring uh, between 13 to 15 percent. Uh, someone like Jason Fix that just joined us from Grace from Real Estate can tell you the, the rents are, are going high. And right. you know that we are very high proponents of building a long term cash flow, you know, cash flowing portfolio, but then we should flip when Tampa rents are soaring. Hmm. What do you mean by that, Jorge? Well, that's a good question, Rafi. And I think what we're talking about here is really diversification, Rafi. Got it, got it. You're not so much pushing you one way or the other, saying, you know, do nothing but rentals, do nothing but flips. Mm -hmm. I think that there's an opportunity in both scenarios. Got it. So, so diversifying with them. And, and, and again, like I said, you know, if you're watching this video, you, you're not just a beginner investor, you're someone that is interested in learning more. And, and this is an advanced, an advanced move where basically you're looking at your rental portfolio and you're saying, okay, rents are going up. My cap rates, if I bought, you know, two, three years ago, my cap rates are pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the time to analyze your portfolio and go, okay, which properties make sense now to maybe rehab and sell as, as, a, as a flip where you're already you know, got some of the expenses paid by the rents, but now you can take advantage of this mini bull market. Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. You got a, you got ahead of me. Uh, I think one of the strategies that we do as a company, Rafi, is uh, flipping a rental. Mm -hmm. So that's like merging both strategies. Flipping, flipping a, rental. a rental. Should we do like a hashtag? That's a good, good, good idea. Hashtag flipping a rental. Hey, Stephanie, can you put that in the comments? Just put hashtag flipping a rental. We're gonna make that trend. Let's do it. But what do you mean by flipping a rental? So we can rewind a little bit back to mm -hmm. what's going on in, in the Tampa Bay area specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I was looking to some stats that show that Tampa ownership back in 2006 was uh, a, was 70% and now it's, uh, it's at 60%. So that's 10% mm. of the population right there. And that number can mean thousands of people, if not mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people that are not a, in the market right now. So, okay. so the, the, the potential of, of renting properties are still there. The potential of uh, you know, those people being your potential buyers mm -hmm. of, your, of your flip are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the other data that I was looking at, you had the baby boomers wanting to down, downsize. Okay. Right? You had the baby boomers. Generation X mm -hmm. you recently lost a lot of equity back in 2006. And, and, and some of the, right here, some of the baby boomers uh, too as well. Some of their okay. retirement accounts went down. And uh, I, I think there's a trend for renting. Mm -hmm. But I believe that trend, uh, as rents go up, is going to be is going to convert to buying eventually. Right. At one point, the the affordability equation is going to flip to to right. to owning right. because right. you know, for example, in St. Pete right now, in St. Petersburg, you know, an average two two, you know, two bedroom, two bedroom, two bathroom, you know, is rented for fifteen hundred bucks. Right. And you know, mortgage rates are so low that we are at that tipping point right. where you know what it makes sense you know, to maybe save for a house and get a house, you can probably get a, a nice house, you know, nice three to in St. Petersburg where you maybe are paying, you know, the same amount, maybe a little bit more, 1600 maybe, uh, if you have good credit versus paying 1500 for, uh, for a rent. And as an investor, remember, we have to think as investors. We cannot be right. thinking as, as homeowners or anything like that. As investors, you go, that's an opportunity. Right. You know, that's an opportunity right there where yes, you keep continue building that rental portfolio, which by the way, can you explain a little bit how cap rates get impacted by rising prices? Uh, because a cap rate, you know, on a house that you bought for $100,000 is very different than a, than a cap rate that you buy for 150. So what is that relationship between 
prices and cap rate? Well, obviously, uh, there's a reason why we try to buy under 100, Rafi, because mm -hmm. typically the numbers only work on properties under 100, mm -hmm. meaning that you're able to, you know, because it's all about how much you put in, mm -hmm. right? That's going to determine what your cap rate is. So what you put in versus what you're getting right. out in a monthly mm -hmm. basis. So it's, a, it, it's, it's the combination of affordability, mm -hmm. you know, so you enter into an affordable housing and at the right. same time getting the, the highest rent possible. So anytime you, you buy a property as, uh, as prices go up, obviously your, your, your capital investment is going to be higher, therefore your cap rate is going to be lower. Right. And, and, and rents, as of right now, they're not keeping up with with the the, the increases. In the Absolutely not. They're rents not. rents are going. You know. Uh, they're going up fast. They're going to go fast. Rents, but they're not as so fast. The prices are going faster. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And, and what happens is again that hundred thousand dollar house that you bought three years ago, Absolutely. it's giving you a cap rate of ten percent. Right. If you buy that same house for one hundred twenty five thousand. Now your cap rate is six, you know, it's seven, eight percent. Right. So definitely, uh, it's, it's something that impacts. But again, as as an advanced, advanced investor, and those of you watching this, you know, are, are trying to get to that level, you need to take advantage of the opportunity. Absolutely. So what well, you go ahead. Going back to that strategy, you never answered that question. The the strategy about flipping the the rental. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like about it hashtag, is that hashtag flip, yes hashtag flipping a rental <laughs> altogether. Is the taxation because anytime you go from ordinary income tax, like let's say you're selling the property, you bought the property today, <clears throat> you sell it tomorrow, within the first 12 months, you're just going to pay uh, ordinary income tax. Mm -hmm. If you hold the property beyond 12 months, your, your, uh, your capital gains could be zero, could be 15 or 20%, which is the max mm -hmm. right now. So that's, that's the strategy. So you look at. And, and before you keep going, very important. Check with your CPA. Yes, check with your guy CPA. Has, you know, yes. He yes. knows a lot, but he's not a CPA. Right, right. He's right. not a CPA, so check with your CPA for that. But again, in most of, most of the circumstances... In most occasions, yeah, you got to check with your CPAs, correct. but but holding it, nine times out of ten, holding it beyond that mm -hmm. 12 months, one day, makes it a long task wise it's going to be better for you. And, and at the same time, you already tested the property as a mm -hmm. rental, mm -hmm. so you know the ins and outs of it. Mm -hmm. And then, then if there's an opportunity to sell it at that point because you have enough equity, you, you have the opportunity to, to sell it. Right. You don't have to be put on a spot or, you know, a, how do you say that? Uh, you don't have to be uh, pressure, 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 yeah. pressure to sell it because you're renting it in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So you're getting that cash flow. You, so if, if you're going to buy a low bowling you or something, you're, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. not going to feel the pressure because you, you have that. Right. Asset that you're renting right now. Right, right. And, and I think, you know, the, the, the strategy to, to put it into, into perspective, you need to look at your rentals and go, okay, awesome. how much I bought them, you know, a, a couple of years ago, how much are they worth today? Absolutely, you know? absolutely. How much are they performing? Because maybe your, your target was 10%, but, you know, this one had more repairs mm -hmm. or had issues with vacancies, stuff like that. And compare those, those cap rates and go, okay, which property, you know, is underperforming? Uh, but the equity has gone up. So if I have an equity that's a property that's underperforming, let's say, hey, instead of the 10%, I'm getting eight, I'm getting 7%. But I see that the equity has gone up 20, 30%. That may be a good candidate Absolutely. to say, you know what, when the tenant goes out, or you know, you can get to a point where you can give a tenant, uh, you know, some notice. You maybe put some additional funds into it, and then flip it because again, the affordability ratio. It's tipping right now, and it's at that point that right. renting and buying, they're pretty much, you know, there, maybe even more on the other side. Uh, and that, that, just to say a little more about that, that's why mm -hmm. I like the option of renting your flip, yes. because it gives you options. Mm -hmm. It gives you options. It's not mm -hmm. one option. You have two, two or three or four different options, right. like Rafi was saying. If there's mm -hmm. a low performer, or by the way, if there's a property that you didn't mean to buy, uh, for for the purpose of building equity, mm -hmm. but it turns out that he has a hundred thousand in equity. You Absolutely. just got lucky. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to buy two instead Absolutely. of keeping that one. Yep. You know, so that's another strategy there. You know. Exactly, exactly. I want to say hi to to Paco Mata and Marilyn Rivera that joined, and all those, also uh, Carlos Rodriguez over there. So thank you very much for joining, and don't forget to share this video uh, in your timelines. Uh, now. 
again, we're not saying stop buying rentals. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. You know, it, it's it's a matter of now you have to be now you have to have the right team to make sure that you maximize the acquisition, you know, discount, you know, on properties because the prices are going up. So in that regards, you have to make sure that you get the best price possible up front. So this is something that you know you really have to say, okay, how can I make sure that I have the right team to get the best price as possible? Because that's where you're gonna you know maximize. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to make you have to make some concessions in terms of that cap rate. You know, those fifteen percent cap rates of two years ago are not there, right? Right, they're not there. They're not there. And, and you brought up a good point. That's what we're gonna start doing to our clients. We're gonna mm -hmm. do market updates in a quarterly basis to mm -hmm. kind of like put it in perspective. Hey, we don't we don't want you guys to lose the opportunity when the cap rate goes from ten to nine because it right. might still work for you. But we want to let you know. You know, we don't want you to think, oh, okay, I don't want this property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, it's, and it's really more tied to the market. There's nothing you can do about it. So. Right, right. So, so a couple of things, you know, that, that I want everyone to live with. You know, I, I, one thing we haven't talked about is rents are going up in in general in the market. Are your rents going up? You know, have you talked to your property manager and say, hey, uh, when you know, are you having that monthly call? Remember, you need to have that monthly call with your property manager to discuss your properties and discussing, hey, you know, this one is, you know, ending next month. Are we going to bump at 50, you know, 75, 100 dollars? Uh, you know, you need to have those conversations with property manager so you can maximize that increase in rents in the market, right? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at it, Rafi, just like the properties we were looking for, mm -hmm. for Juan Nunez, there's mm -hmm. a, the, the opportunity to push the limits is there more than ever mm -hmm. because people are seeking out, seeking to stay within the city limits. The, the Tampa is going through a big transformation right now, so people are right. looking. The same with your apartments, the same mm -hmm. with your rentals. I bet you anything, like if you put a little extra Mm -hmm. in your in, in your rentals and you try that out you might get an, an extra 50 maybe right. you might get an extra 100 but you're gonna have to have a property manager that's active in, in looking, looking out for that absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and, and, and by the way uh, you know that I'm a huge proponent of property management yeah. so that you can have peace of mind but you need to manage the property manager so, so again you need to have that monthly call where you discuss the properties Alex Martinez is here best best title company Hello, no, Alex. How are you? Alex. One of our partners. Uh, but again, you need to have that meeting with the property manager. That way, you discuss these things. Because right Absolutely. now, for example, we had our meeting, right. and we know there's a couple of properties that their lease expires, you know, April, May, and we're ready. You know, we already we already told the tenant, hey, you know, there will be an increase. So we actually are. Again, you want to be the best landlord possible. We already told the tenants, hey, there's an increase coming. You know, get ready. So, so they have time to budget because you, you, you want to be a, 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 a good landlord. You don't want to be that, that one guy that everyone hates to you know, rent from. Uh, but at the same time, it's a business, guys. It's a business and you have to maximize. So, so again, that's, that's, that's the word. It's a business. Yep. You got to treat it as a business. It's What's a business. your business plan? Exactly. You have exactly. a business plan for your four rentals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, Rafi? Shouldn't they have a Absolutely. Plan? Absolutely. With an exit strategy. You, know, you always need to have an exit strategy. Either, hey... It's five years and I do, you know, I refi so that I can get more rentals or in five years I, you know, take my equity and move on. So definitely you have to have and that. I think that a lot of people got in trouble in 2006 because I bet you anything most people didn't have a business strategy, <sighs> don't, don't, don't remind business me. plan, don't, you know. Don't, don't, don't remind <laughs> me. So I was one of those. Yeah. I was I, one of those. Myself, myself, with all the experience that I have, I, I fail for it myself. And uh, it's just about diversification, right? Mm -hmm. so absolutely, about absolutely. So again, number one, maximize your rents. You know, in, in Tampa, rents are soaring. Are your rents going up as well? Yeah, absolutely. Analyze your portfolio. You know, look for those properties that are, are underperforming in terms of cap rate, but that are overperforming in terms of equity. And this may be the time to say, you know what? Let me put a couple of thousand, get it ready for flipping, and move on. And then. Number three, the most important word, diversify. Right. You know, most people that got burned in 2006, 2008, they were not diversified. They put everything on flips or they put everything on rentals, right. you know? Right. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you have to find a way of diversifying. And our, our motto is 80-20. Right. You know, it's the famous 80-20. We suggest that 80% uh, 
uh, are rent of your portfolio is rental, 20% flips. That way you have the security of that monthly income from the cash flow and properties, but that gives you the ability to go for the properties like, you know, our partner Juan Nunez, you know, you know the big home run, you know, swings Absolutely. and stuff like that. Same for your rentals. You, mm -hmm. don't, you don't want to uh, own a hundred percent of what it's worth. You want to be at 7,500 or, yep. or, you know, 75, 25, I'm sorry. Uh, you want to have a spread just in case the market is a correction. You're still there, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and like you always say, Rafi, treat every flip as 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 a potential rental. Mm -hmm. it, it's probably not going to be your best rental, but if this flip is my worst rental, can I still swallow it? Yep. And that's going to be important. Absolutely. A lot of people didn't do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Again, you know, we, we get this all the time. Oh, you know, you guys don't do that many flips. Well, the reason is that, you know, we are very conservative with them. We have an exit strategy if things go well, and we have an exit strategy if things don't go well. So from that perspective, you know, make sure that, that you have that. Before I forget, I saw that Aldo uh -huh. joined. Happy birthday, Happy Aldo. Birthday. I think it's like 55, 55 56 tomorrow. 56. So you can now go to retirement, <laughs> one of those retirement communities. <laughs> Uh, so we'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow, Saturday over there. The whole, the whole thing. Uh, we actually have for him an AARP membership. Nice, so that's nice, my gift. Nice, you know, nice. so uh, you don't have to pay the twenty-five dollar annual membership for AARP. And if you can't drive, we'll drop it off. That's okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll get no Uber because he doesn't know how to oh. do Uber. So we have to call a taxi. So that's 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 okay. That's okay. I'll do. No problem. Uh, and let me say hi and thanks to Francisco Cruz for joining uh, the timeline. Any, any questions? Uh, any last minute questions? Come on. Any last minute questions? Yeah. Again, if you're in Tampa, rent, diversify, analyze your portfolio, okay? Analyze your portfolio and make sure that underperforming assets, those are the ones that you really need to be looking at and saying, okay, what happens with them? Do I put a little bit of investment? Flip them, reserves, and then and then by the way, take those profits, reinvest them into you know increasing your rent portfolio because you, again you want to do you want to do want to do both and have some reserves always have some reserves cash yeah. cash reserves you never know excellent so uh, basically uh, this is it for today uh, we will be back next Friday with a very special Facebook live session because one of us will be in Puerto Rico. Vacation, so, so we're gonna really, do the Facebook live from. So it's really not gonna matter too much because the better half is gonna be here. I will be actually. We, we, we're gonna do it where I'm, you know, we're gonna do the split thing and I'm gonna do it from there. Awesome, yep. awesome, awesome. I'm gonna be you there be by the beach. Or now, something. if I'm at the beach or something like that, you know, don't get jealous. You no, know? no, that's life. And what, what's the whole thing? Don't don't live to work, work to live. That's, 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 that's my motto, work to live. Well, that's the beauty about, about real estate. Really. Absolutely. Real estate investing. Passive income. Absolutely. Passive income. That, we should do one. We should do a, a Facebook like about passive income. I have a great friend, Pat Flynn. Hey, Pat. That maybe we can see if we can join us and explain a little bit about passive income. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Joanne Walker, uh, thank you for joining. Please she share this fine. video. She, she enjoys great the agent show. of Graceful Real Estate. Uh, and to live it, where can they find us? They can always find us, Rafi, at uh, homesforincome.com. That is homes and number four income.com. Actually, we got rental for income.com also. Real estate for investing.com. So we got a whole bunch of websites out there. So we go, yeah. we, we can just say rental for income and income then real estate for investing. investing.com and then homes for income.com yes. we, we, we like the four you know an analogy there so uh, Stephanie thank you you're welcome there you go Stephanie she's just the one all, all this happens because Stephanie's in the background typing and doing those things whatever and all that kind of stuff so uh, thank you Stephanie when, when, when's your birthday Stephanie at the end of this month the 29th <laughs> uh, we have to we have to do something for, for yes for sure we'll do that so again ooh, Sam joined Sam Ali John, just before we're finishing. Let's get out of here now. Just before we're finishing, our great partner Sam from HIS Capital Group joined. Uh, we need to we need to come up with hey Sam, where are our videos? Yes. Yeah. We have to look for the videos. But again, thank you very much for joining uh Greystone Investment 
group Brownback Sessions. I am Rafi. I'm Jorge Vasquez. And see you next Friday. I'll be in Puerto Rico. See you later, guys. See ya.